Hey, it's Timothy Ward from Free Test Prep Online, and in this video, I want to review the basics of the Deals Alder reaction, and more importantly, I want to go over retrosynthetic analysis of the Deals Alder adduct using what I call the Erase 3 Draw 3 method, which allows you to quickly and easily determine the conjugated diene and the dienophile used to create a Deals Alder adduct. The Deals Alder reaction is itself pretty simple. All we need is a conjugated diene and a dienophile. A dienophile is usually just an alkene. The reaction's faster when you have electron withdrawing groups on the alkene because that makes the dienophile want electrons even more. The reaction is exothermic, but it's initiated with a little bit of heat. What happens is we have the dienophile attacks the conjugated diene. One of those pi bonds breaks and forms a new pi bond between the original conjugated diene double bonds and then the other part of the conjugated diene goes and forms a new bond with the other side of the dienophile. You can see the Diels alder adduct on the right. It's a six-membered cyclohexene ring. You can see all of the original carbon atoms as well as all of the new bonds. The new bonds are drawn in green, the original carbon atoms from the conjugated system are in blue, and the original carbons from the dienophile are in red. The second reaction looks a lot more complicated, but really it's the same general idea. So I'm going to draw in the arrows. You can see in the product that we have multiple rings in the system. We originally had a cyclic conjugated diene, so those five carbons are still there and they're represented in blue. The new bonds again are represented in green, and in red, that shows the dienophile. The dienophile also was cyclic originally, so it maintains its cyclic structure in the product. You'll notice that the red lines are drawn going below the cyclohexene ring, and the point for the fifth carbon on the original conjugated diene is pointing upwards. This is going to decrease the amount of steric hindrance in the product. We call that the endo position when they're facing opposite directions. Now I'm going to show you how to determine what the original conjugated diene and dienophile were when you're looking at the Diels alder adduct. I call this method the Erase 3, Draw 3 method. The first thing we're going to do is locate the cyclohexene ring. Then we're going to erase the three new bonds that were formed during the reaction and draw in the three old pi bonds that were broken to create the adduct. Remember that we formed one new pi bond as a result of the Diels alder reaction. That's going to be our starting point for finding the new bonds that joined the two starting materials together. So we're going to look diagonally across from that new pi bond, and we're going to erase those two new bonds. That pi bond is also one of the new bonds, so that's the third thing that we're going to erase. Now we're going to draw in the three old pi bonds that were broken to create the adduct. And remember, we had a conjugated diene, so where we just erased one of the new pi bonds, adjacent to that is where we had the conjugated system. So those are the two bonds there to make the conjugated diene. Now directly opposite to where we erased the pi bond is where we had the double bond on the dienophile. For the second Diels alder adduct shown on the bottom, it looks a lot more complicated than the one above. But really, all we need to do is follow the same three steps. So we're going to locate the cyclohexene ring, and we're going to look across from that new pi bond, and we're going to erase those two new bonds. Then we're going to erase that pi bond that was formed, because that one's also new. Now we just need to draw in the three old pi bonds that were broken to create the adduct. So again, we have the conjugated diene, these two bonds were adjacent to where we just erased the pi bond, and then across from that pi bond that we erased, that's where we had the dienophile double bond. So now you've seen both, and of course, you may think that these look very not pretty, so we can redraw them to represent them how we want to. And there you have it, the Erase 3, Draw 3 method. 